I mean, let's just kick things off with the elephant in the room. This boy literally made a coffin mobile, which on one hand is quite shocking, and then on the other hand, that's the most sensei thing ever. Though it still raises the question, um, that magic carpet ride wasn't a one-time thing. He literally brings in old grandma on it, which is just that little flying fluff ball that turns into the carpet. He still has been making people drag his bitch ass around this entire time when he never had to, and that speaks volumes. But I've said it, a few weeks back we have one of the greatest isekai episodes ever made, and then the following week it just became one of the best isekais I've seen in recent memory, but I'm gonna say it right now, isekai of the year contender, which is saying a hell of a lot because next season we got some big dogs coming back in this medium, but this show is literally a 10 out of 10. You can't convince me otherwise. Of course, I have full live reactions over on Patreon if you want to see my full good thought to any of these wonderful, no longer allowed in other world episodes. It's over there exclusively. So, this was probably the best arc, but at the same time, the past like three to four episodes have literally been next level and elevated this show into a completely different show. What I really appreciate about the whole sister reveal, because I think, like many, now, I didn't go browsing completely deep in the internet, but my assumption was, and I'm sure I wasn't alone, is that the old woman was a love interest who was a lot younger than she actually appeared, or this was going to be a situation where she naturally grew old, and because he's an elf, he's clearly going to outlive her. Turns out, nope, no love story there at all. It was all teacher-students, and the idea that these two were sisters... Now... What I really appreciated them doing was that up until like the last five minutes of the episode, I didn't think the younger sister was bad. I think she just got thrown into a situation where it's understandable why the older sister, Greed, got resentful. Imagine, like even before you see the backstory of her having to take care of her sister, imagine being thrown into a world having your teacher, you know, wait on you, think you're great, you're being special, you're, you're trying to impress... Here comes this new girl, and the new girl not only steals the spotlight, but he stops focusing on you at all. That's pretty shitty. That's almost like tossing you away. It's no wonder someone gets into that evil category. And if this was just a normal good isekai, that would have served as a motivation for why she turned bad. But then they took it up one extra notch. And then you realize what happened to her in the past. And the idea that, you know, imagine having to wait on your sister. It's not like your sister did anything wrong. And in a way, what the father, you know, having family look after family, but imagine not even be able to go to school, not even for a simple moment, because if you leave her for two seconds, she might die. And then the dad slapping you just because you wanted to, for probably the first time all year, took two minutes to yourself. And I'm, I'm not even going to say like, where was the dad? The dad probably was at work in order to pay for everything. So I understand, but it's like, what a shitty situation. And then Truck Coon comes in, throws you to an East Sky world. You're finally getting to do something and then you get tossed away again. That alone took it up to an amazing level. So the base level of why you get jealous when the new girl steals the spotlight, good motivation. Add in the flashback of what happened in her original world. Oh, now we're cooking. But then these bastards take it up three extra notches, deliver the home run that, oh, when you see it from the younger sister's point of view, she feels guilty. My sister never had a chance to live a life because of me. I want to take on all the burden of this world so she can just live a life for once. Sure. If maybe she heard this right away, she wouldn't have went crazy. But the idea that they took it up two extra notches to turn something into just a magnum opus of isekai narratives. This was brilliantly directed. And every step of the way, I understood the motivations and what would cause someone to grow a little crazy. The fact that they avoided a love interest cliche. Now, even though I was expecting the old woman to be a love interest and, you know, was either just he's loved her all his life and now she's getting close to dying or greed did something to turn her old. Even though I was waiting for that, that would have been more of a cliche. The fact that they were sisters and neither one of them deep down actually resented each other. It was just a shitty situation. And the fact that they get that that second chance. I love how this show, rather than going everyone guarantees gets a second chance, it's very situational. Sometimes they get killed, sometimes they get thrown back. And a majority of the people, since we've had this ability to reveal, have been sent back. However, 
they've all deserved it. And I love the idea because if we would have committed to her killing, because before it was revealed it was her sister, it, it was implied that she killed her. If she would have killed her, I think there would have been more pushback on her getting a quote-unquote second chance. But because she didn't die in just age, and then you see the sisterly bond, it just does a fantastic job at getting the motivations down. And Sensei as a character, one of the most questionable bastards I've seen in Isekai, but one of the best as well. Like, this is legitimately one of the best Isekai MCs that I've ever seen. The man is the perfect level of deranged, but also, I truly believe he just likes writing really interesting stories, and when he sees death approaching, he doesn't like dodging because he's like, yes please. And that's crazy, but at the end of the day, he is actually helping a good amount, and God help anyone because now he has a goddamn coffin mobile. I need an OVA, like an episode 12.5, where we get to see the dwarves interact with this man when he gave them the request, and I want to see them struggle to build it. Because I just know damn well they're like, what the fuck, okay, like a, a vehicle, okay, th th this is crazy, but why a coffin? They're probably like, oh, maybe he wants to, like, you know, keep his enemies' bodies near him as, like, a deterrent? Who knows? Like, you know, they probably what? They probably had some questions, and I'd really love to see their point of view. Now, I want to give major props to the production. I'm sure there's going to be some people who say, oh my god, there was skeleton 3D CGI. Not me. I think it was wonderful. And I think the big reason the 3D worked for me in this episode is usually when skeletons are 3D, it's just like a generic, it looks like a skeleton because skeleton character models are hard to mess up, especially in 3D, but it's just a white texture. It's just pure white texture and it just very obviously looks 3D. They had this grainy effect, this dirty, dusty effect all over the bones, and it made it feel more like they were coming out of the ground and it helped them blend into the scene a lot better. And in doing so, I didn't look at the 3D and say, damn, I wish they would have hand drew all those skellies. No, I actually thought they did very well with what they accomplished there. And this show, it's the top three of the season, if you ask me. Like, I, I ain't gonna sugarcoat that. Like, this is anime of the season contender. It's isekai of the year contender. And just legitimately one of the best isekai MCs I think I've ever seen. Let me know what you're thinking of uh, this week's episode down below. What do you hope to see with the last episode next week? Hopefully we do get a season 2 announcement because this show is too good to say goodbye forever. Let me know down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell. And like I mentioned, full live reactions over on Patreon. And hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. Alright, so today we got Dreadseed, Jacob Winslow, Conrad Sosin, Sovereign, Tobias Reinhold, Jonas Welbling, Flave Dorks, 414, Wen2x, and we also have Drift. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care, and you all have a good one.